What's up everybody and welcome back to Urban Crest Online. It is an honor to have you with us again today. Now, really, really cool special treat, Pastor Tyler is in the house and he's gonna bring us a word on being thankful in the crazy social media age that we live in right now. He is going to bring it, so I need you guys to open up that Urban Crest app so you can follow along line by line and note by note because we're gonna learn a little something today and it's a very, very cool word. So before we get into that word though, why don't we prepare our hearts with a time of worship? Let's sing songs to the Lord because he is absolutely worthy of the very best of our praise. I hope you're ready because I'm ready. Your glory like a fire awakening. 
hearts are full of faith. You have a full attention. You have the final say. So come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is. Everything in the name of Jesus This is a house of miracles Yeah There's resurrection power Yeah Your blood runs
Hey, Urban Crest Online. My name is Tyler Evans. I'm the student pastor here at Urban Crest. We just say thank you for choosing to join us online today. Uh, so as we talk about our series called Thankful, as you watched our promo video, before we dive into the message, we want to take time to give our personal thanks to express our gratitude to the men and women of service this Veterans Day. It's coming up this week, and we want to express our personal thanks for the sacrifices that you've made so we can enjoy the freedoms that we have here in America. Realistically, I wouldn't be able to share the gospel every single week without men and women like you who gave their life for us to have the freedoms that we have here today. So the Bible says that there's no greater love than this than when a man gives his life for his friends. And you express that type of love. And for that, we are thankful. As we segue into our message today, uh, I wanted to express some thoughts that I had on thankfulness as we approach Thanksgiving. Uh, before I do so, um, in my 29 short years here on earth, there's a couple of things that I have noticed. And maybe you've noticed it too, specifically in the past two years. I see a lot of negativity. I can almost feel it. You can almost see it in the air everywhere you go. I hop on my Facebook page and I see a lot of hate. I read the news and I see a lot of hate. I get on YouTube, I see a lot of hate. I get on TikTok, I see a lot of hate. I go to the Let's Talk Lebanon page and I see a lot of hate. Listen, I even go to Christian forums and I see a lot of hate. This world is so stinking negative, and it's because our world is such a mess. And this shouldn't be a surprise to us, because we're all broken people living in a broken world. That There's no surprise that people are cranky. And the pandemic and the, and the economic climate of the world kind of adds fuel to that fire. And so we see a lot of cranky people, and not just in the world, but we see them in our churches. And if I'm being honest with you, 
I would say it's hard not to be depressed right now, even as a pastor, because things are a little difficult. Does anyone else feel that way? Maybe you watching, maybe you feel that way also. And if so, drop it in the comments. Let me know if, if you agree to say amen. The world is stressful right now, and it's hard not to be depressed. It's hard not to be anxious. And as we roll up on Thanksgiving, in the day where we express and celebrate our thankfulness for everything that we have and everything that God has given us, we may be thinking that we have less to be thankful for because of how hard things are right now. Because it's been a few rough years, hasn't it? So today, we're going to unpack a message titled, Thankful. And I want to show you, my goal is to show you how we can be grateful when things don't appear to be so great. And before we dive in, let's go ahead and open up in prayer. Uh, dear God, I thank you that we're able to uh, gather today uh, digitally around the globe. Man, it's, it's awesome that we can redeem technology for your glory. God, I pray that as we learn and we dive into the Bible together, we invite your presence to be with everyone who is watching online. Speak to them. Draw them to Jesus as they hear your word. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. So how do we express thankfulness when things aren't so great? How do we have gratefulness when things aren't so great? As Thanksgiving is approaching, we know that Thanksgiving is a day that we dedicate to express our thankfulness for everything that we have. I think it's ironic that that comes the day before Black Friday, where literally 24 hours after we express our thankfulness for what we have, we literally trample other shoppers to death fighting for a new Xbox or a new TV. It's extremely ironic. I think that's kind of revealing about our culture that we're, we struggle with thankfulness. But as Thanksgiving approaches and we dedicate a day to express our thankfulness, I can remember in my personal life where there were seasons of Thanksgiving where I didn't feel specifically thankful. There were seasons in my life where life was just difficult and I felt like I didn't really have a lot on that Thanksgiving day to be thankful for. Maybe it was the year that my grandpa, my grandma, and my uncle all died within a span of six months. Maybe it was the year that my parents were fighting to the point of divorce and my mom was struggling with alcohol and she ended up in the ICU because her body was shutting down. And when she got out of the hospital, my parents were separated temporarily and we were going to counseling and Alcoholics Anonymous. And maybe in that season, it was hard for me on Thanksgiving Day to express my thankfulness. Or maybe it was the year that I got fired from my first job after I totaled my car and had no way to get to work, and I even had to drop out of college. It's seasons like that where I didn't feel particularly thankful. I was exposed to, I was supposed to express my thankfulness, but I didn't feel very thankful. I felt like I had very little to be thankful for. And so we all have seasons like this, and I'm not saying this for you to, to show pity to me or to feel sorry for me, because we all have our own problems. And one thing I want to remind you as you watch today, as I want to remind you that every year has its problems. It may not be COVID, it may not be the tough economy, it may not be whatever the circumstances you are facing next year, they could be vastly different. But I promise you, each day has its own worries, and each day has its own problems. They just change names and circumstances. In fact, the Bible actually tells us this. It says this in Matthew 6, verse 34. It says, So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. See, what we see is that things will break, events will get canceled, Teams will lose, assignments will fail, friends will move, projects will be lost, customers will choose another business, loved ones will pass away every single year. Year after year, grief will come and grief will go every single day because every day has its own troubles. But one thing we need to remember is this. This is important. If you're a note taker, I'd write this down is that gratefulness is a choice. Gratefulness is a choice. Gratefulness is an action. It's not a reaction. Gratefulness is an action, not a reaction. See, gratefulness doesn't just happen. It's a mindset that we choose, and it's in the Bible, and God commands us to choose gratefulness. 
Here's what the Bible says. In Psalms 118, verse 24, it says, This is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So here we see a call to action, a verb. It says, let us. See, gratitude is a choice and it's a command by God. So be thankful for today. Be thankful for yesterday and be thankful for tomorrow for these days are a gift from God. Wherever life has you, whether you're on the mountain or you're in a valley, whether you're running through fields of joy or you're drowning in seas of sorrow, rejoice for today is a gift from God. So I know you may be thinking it's, it's, it's so it seems so shallow to smile on the outside when you're not truly grateful on the inside. Surely that's not what I mean. Uh, that's not what I'm saying when I'm talking about expressing gratefulness every day, even when you don't feel like it. That's not what I'm saying by choosing to be grateful. The Bible isn't telling us to simply put on a fake smile and to go through the motions. The Bible doesn't ever call us to surface level external action that is authentic and derived from the core of our heart. See, Jesus was all about the heart of the matter. So God truly wants us to be thankful every single day. He wants your joy, your, your happiness, and your thankfulness to flow from your heart to your face where you smile. He's not asking you to fake it. He wants it to be authentic. So this leads us to the question, and the one we're going to answer today is how can we choose to be thankful as the Lord commands if our circumstances in our life are preventing us from feeling thankful? We're going to answer that, and we're going to dive into Acts chapter 16, starting in verse 22. It says this, A mob quickly formed against Paul and Silas, and the city officials ordered them stripped and beaten with wooden rods. They were severely beaten, and they were thrown into prison. The jailer was ordered to make sure they didn't escape. So the jailer put them into the inner dungeon and clamped their feet in stocks. At around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening. Let's stop there for a moment. So as I shared before, I've had some, some seasons in life that were difficult, but I've never been chased by a mob, arrested, beaten with rods, and that's plural, meaning multiple rods were hitting them, and then drug into an innermost prison and where my feet were clamped into stocks. I've never had that happen. I mean, there's, there's always a chance that it could happen, but I, highly, I find that highly unlikely. And so what were Paul and Silas doing that deserved such treatment? Ooh, if you read before the verses we shared, it just showed that they were going through Roman colonies, preaching Jesus and baptizing new believers. And now here they are sitting in prison, their feet chained under heavy guard after being, as the Bible clearly puts it, severely beaten. So how do Paul and Silas react to this season they find themselves in? Did they shout that it wasn't fair? Did they gossip to other inmates around them? Did they lead a rebellion and break free? Did they shout that you're going to have to talk to my attorney? Did they sulk in a corner and turn their back on God because it seemed that God wasn't faithful to them? No, that's not at all what they did. The Bible says that they were praying and singing songs to God. And it actually says that they were specific that around midnight they were singing songs and praying to God. I don't know about you, but I love this passage of Scripture because it's awesome. But it's also convicting because there are numerous times where I've come into church, where I've walked into this room with a lot on my mind, with a lot on my shoulders, and a lot on my heart. And I either didn't sing worship songs because I didn't feel like it, or I barely mouthed the lyrics. See, my mouth was moving, but my heart wasn't. And my heart wasn't moving because I wasn't letting the spirit move. You ever been there before? Maybe you're there right now. But what we see is that Paul and Silas were having a party in prison. Paul and Silas were having a party in prison. So here's what we see they were doing. They were worshiping when others were worrying, and they were praying when others were panicking. See, Paul and Silas didn't let their circumstances dictate their praise. Paul and Silas praised God despite their circumstances. I want to say that again, and I recommend you write it down. Paul and Silas didn't let their circumstances dictate their praise. 
Paul and Silas praise God despite their circumstances. That's the type of thankfulness I want, don't you? That's what I want. And this is a type of thankfulness that God calls us to. This is the type of thankfulness that only God himself supplies. And it's ours to have. So let's keep reading as we press on together. Picking up in verse 26. It says, Suddenly there was a massive earthquake, and the prison was shaken to its foundations, and all the doors immediately flew open, and the chains of every prisoner fell off. The jailer woke up to see the prison doors wide open. He assumed the prisoners had escaped, so he drew his sword to kill himself. But Paul shouted to him, Stop! Don't kill yourself! We're all here. We're going to stop here for a moment. See, in the midst of their prayer and praise, the party in the prison blew the doors off the cells and bust the shackles off the walls. I mean, that's the type of worship set I want to be in, right? I'm not sure if we can handle it because we freak out when someone lifts their hand in the air during a worship set. <laughs> but I mean, I think that's awesome. And we put a lot of attention on the fact that they were set free, but we can overlook something as I know I have done often. And I want to turn our attention to the reaction of the jailer. See, the jailer was sleeping on the job when he was suddenly awoken by this supernatural, God-sent earthquake. And to his horror, all these prisoners were now free. So assuming that these prisoners had ran off and that he would be held responsible, he drew his sword to kill himself. See, this prison's guards of life. It changed in the blink of an eye. Just super quick, one quick earthquake, and his life flipped upside down. One moment, he was peacefully resting, and then moments later, he was about to rest in peace. I mean, many of us can relate to that, right? How life can flip on his head in a single day. Maybe you failed a class. Maybe you totaled a car. Maybe your best friend moved away. Maybe, maybe you, you're going through a divorce. Maybe a spouse was unfaithful. Maybe you lost your job. Maybe you got a, a bad health diagnosis. Maybe a loved one suddenly passed away. See, in a moment's notice, everything can go from tranquil to tragic. This guard was living in his darkest night, and he chose to end his life. But unlike Paul and Silas, this guard chose to react to his circumstances rather than acting despite his circumstances. And this is where many of us live. The things look bleak. There's no way out. There's no hope. So we only react to the circumstances around us. And unfortunately, that's where many of us derive our thankfulness. That's where many of us derive our worship. And it's like a thermostat. It's dependent on the conditions around us. And that's where we derive our thankfulness. I want to remind you, that God doesn't call us to react to the world around us. Rather, he wants us to impact the world around us. He doesn't want us to be a thermometer that reacts to its environment. He wants us to be a thermostat that changes the environment around us. So many of us, unfortunately, we're like this jailer. We're fair weather Christians. We thank God only when things are good, when the weather is fair. We express thanks when our grades are good, when we have money in our bank account. When our family is kind, when our family is healthy, when we win our games, when the Bengals win a football game, when things don't break, but in a blink, when things change and the weather is anything but fair, when life goes from tranquil to tragic, we stop worshiping and we stop praying and we stop thinking like God isn't keeping his end of a deal like in some sort of agreement that we have made. I want to remind you, there is no deal. God calls us to be thankful every single day, even when we're beaten with rods, thrown into prison, and shackled to a wall. Let's keep reading, picking up in verse 29. The jailer called for the lights and ran to the dungeon and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, along with everyone in your household. And they shared the words of the Lord with him and all who lived in his household. Even at that hour of the night, the jailer cared for them and washed their wounds. Then he and everyone in his household were immediately baptized. 
He brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He and his entire household rejoiced because they all believed in God. I mean, powerful. What we see is with sword in hand, this jailer was ready to end his life. His circumstances were simply too much. He was surely living in his darkest moment of his life. But Paul and Silas cried out to the jailer in the midst of darkness and turned on the light. And this is where we see the jailer's life, his darkest night, turned into his brightest day. Because what we see is that the prisoners hadn't run off. In fact, they were still with Paul and Silas. Friends, I want to remind you that we never see clearly in the dark. Things often look bleaker than they are. Ask this jailer who assumed that all the prisoners were gone because he couldn't see them in the dark. Some of us are living in seasons of darkness, but like this jailer, when the light shines once more, you too will realize that there is hope in the dark, you just can't see it. Christians, we have hope even on the darkest of days. I challenge you not to dwell on the darkness, but instead turn to the light. See, the jailer noticed that something was shining through Paul and Silas before the lights went out, before the the earthquake. When they were locked in their prison cell, he noticed something was shining through them as they were singing and praying. And these other prisoners, they noticed it too because they didn't run off the moment they could have. They noticed something. And so the guard asked what everyone was wondering, what must I do to be saved? See, the reason Paul and Silas were partying in prison, the reasons they were worshiping when others were worrying and praising when others were panicking is not because of the darkness around them. Surely they were living in darkness, but it was the light living inside of them. That is why they are worshiping and praising. That is why they are expressing thankfulness. And so they answered the question, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, along with everyone in your household. See, on our darkest days, in our deepest prisons, on our most painful days, we have something worth singing about and something to be thankful for. And it's Jesus. Trials come and trials will go, but Jesus, he's forever. Even on my worst day, Jesus is with me. Jesus forgives me. Jesus loves me. He never forsakes me. Even as I face death, I know he's going to walk alongside me. He's going to hold my hand. And if I cross over into eternity, he's going to welcome me into heaven. And I'm going to be able to go to heaven because of what he did for me. And because of that, Jesus changed my life forever. Because of what Jesus did, no matter what happens in my life, I have a reason to be thankful, even when my life gives me no reason to be. See, we don't worship because of our circumstances. We worship because of what Jesus did. And because of that, we will always have a reason to be thankful. And that is how we can be grateful when things aren't so great. Because no matter how bad things get, we always have hope. No matter how dark the night is, we have the light of the world shining inside of us. So this jailer went on and accepted Jesus to be his Lord and Savior. It says that he and his entire household gave their life to Christ, and they were baptized that very night. See, this jailer who was holding these missionaries hostage, he was now set free by the prisoners that he had in his dungeon. I mean, only Jesus can do that. So friends, I want to remind you of this as we wrap up our message And we jumped over this, and in verse 25, I want to return to it for just a moment. It says, Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and other prisoners were listening. Did you see it? Don't miss it. It said that while Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, the Bible says the other prisoners were listening. See, when Paul and Silas were singing when they should have been sobbing, The other prisoners were listening when they should have been sleeping. When the jail doors blew open, the prisoners, they didn't run from the jailer. They stayed with Paul and Silas. When the jailer turned the light on, he was perplexed and asked them, what is different about you? You see, listen to this. 
When we worship Jesus, despite the circumstances around us, the world will notice. And when their circumstances break them, they'll ask us, what makes us different? Because the jailer noticed that they were living in their darkest day and they were worshiping. And when he was living in his darkest day, he was ready to end his life. And that's when he looked to Paul and Silas and asked them, what must I do to be saved? Friends, listen to this. When we worship, despite the darkness, we shine light in the midst of darkness. I'll say that again. I'll write it down. When we worship, despite the darkness, we shine light in the midst of darkness. And here's the thing. The darker the night, the brighter we shine. So shine bright, Christian. Others are watching. If you're passing through the darkest of storms, just know you'll shine Jesus that much more bright, brighter. Matthew 5, 14 through 16, it says this, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do, I, neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others. They may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. What this verse is reminding us, is that people see Jesus when we display Jesus. See, it was the praises and the prayers that broke the shackles of not only Paul and Silas, but all the prisoners who were listening. Don't rob others of the experience of Christ because we are letting our circumstances dictate our thankfulness. Be a light on a hill, a star on a dark night, party in prison, because we have something worth celebrating. And when you do, captives around you will find freedom too. Their shackles will shake loose when they hear you worshiping Jesus in the darkness and they see the glorious light. Let's pray as we close. Uh, dear God, I thank you uh, for the message that you, you've given us today. I'm thankful for your word and, and the great truth that it contains. God, I'm grateful that as a Christ follower, that we have hope in the dark. Like this prison guard, when the lights are off and we feel like there is no hope, there is hope even when we can't see it. And Jesus is our greatest hope, and we're thankful for him. Without him, there's no other way to heaven. God, I pray there's somebody watching online today. If they don't have that hope, if they're living in a season and they have yet to give their life to Jesus, I pray today is that day. I pray they give their life to Christ because he's the only way to heaven. He is the only hope we have when things are dark. So just be with us all. Thank you for joining us today. Amen. Thank you for joining us online today. I pray you have a great week.
Hey, thank you, Pastor Tyler, for that great word. You guys, just like every other week right here at Urban Crest Online, it is Pastor Appreciation Week. So let's get in the comments right now. And you know what? He's a student pastor. You don't even have to use words. Just use happy face emojis, thumbs up, high fives, all that. Because, you know, kids don't speak in words anymore. Just you send pictures, send a GIF, do what you got to do. Let Pastor Tyler know that you appreciate the word that he brought. I know I leveled up from it, and I hope you did too. So I'm going to give you a second to do it right now. Get it done. Get in there. It's really easy. Just click the picture. You got it? Got it. Okay. So at this point in the service, we wanted to offer you the opportunity to give. And when we were thinking about ways to encourage you, we landed on the moon the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. And it's a really, really great thing. We wanted to show you what your generosity is doing for missions around the world. So as we give to the Lottie Moon Christmas offering, we are joined by other Southern Baptist churches and together we make an even bigger impact. Take a look. We all lead busy lives, but if we could just stop everything, and take a bird's eye view, a little higher. There, now we can see the multitudes. We are fueled by a shared vision to bring the name of Christ to those who have yet to hear. So we move forward to extreme places, corners of the world that have no access to the gospel. We train missionaries, send them out together and pray that God's grace be known. We help the hurting, comfort the dying, give hope to the displaced, and have seen thousands come to faith in Christ. We're able to do so much more together than if we were chasing this vision alone. This is our common effort, together. Come on guys, that was amazing. I hope you are encouraged and that you are going into prayer to ask the Lord how he would have you serve with your time, your talent, and your treasure, and know that we're praying right alongside you as you make those very important decisions. Now, I don't know where you are, but right here, it has been an awesome, amazing, beautiful day. If you're hungry like I am, it is time to go and grab a bite. In the meantime, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you know when we are online getting to do the amazing things that we get to do right here at Urban Crest Online. And just as a side note, you guys, at the start of December, we are going completely live stream. So when you join us, you're going to be in the house right here at Urban Crest at Lebanon. Urban Crest at Lebanon meets Urban Crest online. It's going to be a beautiful thing and we are so, so pleased to get to bring it to you. So please keep coming back. We will see you next time. Bye.